This is the iPhone 6 Plus and this phone was released 6 years ago, all the way back in 2014. It was possibly the largest jump that Apple has ever made in terms of design when compared to its predecessor which was the iPhone 5S. And however you might look at this phone, it remains iconic in the history of Apple for a few reasons. First of all, Then, it was the first larger sized iPhone Apple made and that made it the most selling iPhone ever, which is quite a statement attached to this phone. So let's get started and see how this phone yet performs in 2020. Just to clarify, I haven't been using this phone personally. It was gifted by my late grandfather to my dad all the way back in 2014 and currently it's being used by my mom. Spoiler alert, she's been very happy with this phone and isn't looking to change it anytime soon. Anyway, enough of the history, let's get to how this phone actually holds up after 6 years of daily use. Starting with the design and how the externals have held up, as you can see that it's still looking almost as good as new. It has a Gorilla Glass covered full HD LCD screen that sizes in at 5.5 inches and also a circular home button that also works like a charm when using it as a fingerprint sensor. This was the last physically pressing home button that Apple made before they switched to the haptic engine powered button with the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, which also means that this phone doesn't have any sort of IP rating. The device is covered with an aluminum back which comes over to the frame of the phone, including the pronounced antenna lines. But the phone does feel like a single and seamless unit. As you might remember, this phone had major controversies about the bend gate, meaning that it was known to bend even through regular usage, like putting it in the back pocket. Luckily, I haven't had any such issues, and although I'm pretty sure that it's going to bend with my bare hands if I try, I can't complain about this issue because I haven't experienced it with normal daily usage between different users through all these years. All I can say is that the build quality of the 6 Plus has, in fact, held up amazingly well. On the bottom of the device, we see a lightning port, which is the same port that Apple uses on the latest iPhone 12s as well the single loudspeaker on the device and a headphone jack. <laughs> yeah, this was the last iPhone to come with a headphone jack until Apple decided to remove it and made the entire smartphone industry follow that decision. At this point, I, I don't need a headphone jack on my phone, but anyway, it's nice to have it. Coming to the specs of this phone, it's powered by Apple's A8 processor, which is a 20 nanometer chip and it comes with 16, 64 or 128 gigabytes of storage, which all share 1 gigabyte of RAM. To see if the A8 is yet a capable processor in today's standards, I downloaded and fired up some games including PUBG and Asphalt 9, which both seem to run without any issues. Now of course if you run the same on an iPhone 12 or say a Note 20 Ultra, the differences will be easily noticeable in terms of starting speed and even graphics of the game. But the point is that games of at least this caliber are yet perfectly playable on this phone. The phone has a single 8 megapixel camera on the back that supports video up to 1080p at 60 frames per second and a 1.2 megapixel selfie camera on the front. The photo quality of course doesn't compare to what we see in smartphones nowadays, but it does not disappoint as well. The pictures do tend to look slightly over sharpened to me with a low amount of saturation than I'd prefer, but they yet follow Apple's norm of keeping the colors natural. To be frank, no one's going to get a refurbished iPhone 6 or 6 Plus expecting great quality out of the cameras, but they managed to do the job well anyway. Talking about software, the iPhone 6 Plus originally launched with iOS 8.0 and the last software update for this phone was to iOS 12.4.9. Now considering that the latest iOS version is iOS 14.2, this phone isn't far behind especially when accounting that it was launched in 2014. Apple provided it with 4 years of software updates which is great to have on, on any phone. And even though this device isn't going to get any more software updates, it runs smoothly on the current version and I haven't noticed any hiccups or lags as far as I've been using it. I've also been getting a full day battery with a good amount of browsing and watching videos. And for those curious people out there, the battery health in the settings menu is shown to be 84%. So a battery replacement should boost the battery performance quite reasonably. To conclude with the iPhone 6 Plus, 
I just want to say that iPhones generally tend to hold up amazingly well for around 5 years. Well at least that's how much I've experienced myself. And to be honest, not many smartphones including flagships last that long. I've had experiences of Samsung flagships breaking on me in around 3 years. But I do see people still using the iPhone 6 and even 5s sometimes, being very happy with them. And the 6 plus is still a great phone to use in 2020. Well that's it for this video, thanks for watching, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you want to catch more content like this and with that said, I'll see you guys in the next video.